start to go. John, uh, John may direct to you. I like the slap. Thank you. That's always helpful. This flight simulator has traveled from Spain to Las Vegas and now to Alaska at our flight school HQ here at Angle of Attack. Now that it's here, we've been working to get it all set up and ready for student pilots to start their flight training. If you followed along in the last episode, you saw a lot of flight sim setup with this new AATD from Virtual Fly, as well as some flying in Alaska. Make sure to subscribe for awesome content now and in the future. Less than half of our viewers aren't subscribers, and we'd love to have you on board. Let's jump into this video with the flight simulator all completed, and I'll give you my first impressions as a flight instructor. All right, so we are finally here. Uh, you guys have seen the unraveling of the whole panel. You've seen the setup. This is me sitting in front of the simulator for the first time and got the chills a little bit. This thing is, is all set up. It's beautiful. It's got nice lighting on it. And I'm just going to go through and give you some of my first impressions on this simulator and, uh, and how it's going to work out here. So there will be much more to this entire story, how we're going to use it and so on. Uh, but just for now, me sitting down in this chair, first time ever, angle of attack, AATD, Advanced Aviation Training Device, an approved flight simulator that we can use for flight training here at Angle of Attack. Hello everyone, this is Oscar Mateos and I'm the Sales and Marketing Manager for Virtufly. Hey guys, John Alvarez, founder of State Level Avionics. Virtufly stands out for its high quality, high end flight simulation equipment. So when we talk about FAA certification, that really is the two sets of words that everybody always asks. Is it FAA certified? Getting a flight simulator certified by the FAA is a difficult process and it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of people to actually make it happen. I think kind of the bread and butter of this simulator is going to be those working toward initial ratings. So especially an instrument rating where you can log 20 hours for the AATD. So Virtufly has a very big certification department that is in charge of all of that from the first moment we are starting to design a flight simulator to be certified up to the last moment where we get the LOA, which is a letter of approval that will be actually handed to the flight school together with the certified flight simulator. From a flight school perspective, I want this thing to show up and I just want it to work. It, it just works, right? And it should do that. So these guys helped, of course, get everything tweaked and everything after it had gone through the shipment process and just really helpful and, and helpful to the extent where they, they walked me through it in my own language. You know, I'm not the technical person. I don't know all the whiz bang things they're doing moving around, but all I know is that it just works. I load up the simulator. Everything's working great. The visuals are working great. I'm using the instructor station. I'm taking people through this whole process and everything's working. So here we are lined up with the runway and now I'm going to power up and just get this baby in the air, dancing on those rudder pedals. Everything's in the green and rotate. That should work. All right. As you can see, uh, already very smooth. One thing that's really important with these simulators is the refresh rate. So how smooth are the visuals as you turn? Well, look how smooth these visuals are. It's butter, absolute butter, which is very, very important. So beautiful there. Again, light touch of the controls, just like a real airplane. The trim works well. Uh, of course, the manual trim down here on the panel, the electric trim here. So. I know this is all VFR, just hey, quick takeoff from Homer. Um, as we turn here, you'll be able to see the famous spit, as you guys have seen in my videos here in Homer. Uh, nice reflection of the cloud. So that's where we're going to leave it off. We have a lot more to come. We want to show you kind of the whole story behind this panel, why it is the panel for angle of attack, why I think it's one of the best panels to fit many flight schools. Um, and for you, just the regular everyday student that wants to work on instrument or even private pilot stuff, uh, why is a simulator important in your training regime? So plenty of that to come, plenty of more instrument stuff. You get to see me in the instructor station. You get to see 
these other guys in the hot seat. And so we're going to uh, head over to that content now that you've seen these first impressions. Hope you guys really enjoyed seeing this at work and uh, hope that gets you excited for more content to come here next. So those are my first impressions of the flight simulator. Now let's put John in the pilot seat and have him shoot the same approach he did in the real airplane during the previous episode. All right, so we've got the uh, approach in here. We've got the iPad over here with ForeFlight. We've got our plate as well right here, ready to go. And we can see Kutna right there, Joel Mu, and Hisec. You can see 4,000 at Kutna, 2,700 at Joel Mu. And at high sec, we're gonna need to be at 2,500 feet. Yeah. yeah, so what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at my vertical speed, making sure that's not getting too, a call kind of out of control. I'm actually gonna bring up that FPL here on the PFD to see my distance that's a good to idea. cut. Now, I actually really like that versus taking my eyes good. all the way to I over like here and looking in this column. I'm really staying focused good. on the PFD. And as you can see there, one thing I did is I actually went through 4,000 at cut. Now, we're now at uh, Kutna, so we're now going to continue our descent Florida down. That uh, should be about 2,700, I think it was. Yeah, yep. 2,700 at Jilmu. So uh, what I want to look at here is I want to look at how I'm maintaining here oh. with the localizer. Or not really with the localizer because I'm not on an ILS, but really more so with the RNAV approach. Uh, so I'm 4.2 out from Jilmu. I want to make sure my speed doesn't get too slow. And I want to make sure I'm continuing to keep it coming down at a gradual rate. I'm trim away just a little bit of that control pressure. Just pushing forward on the yoke a lot. What's cool is the G1000 is telling you on your vertical speed, the magenta, where you need to be for your descent rate. You see that? Yeah. That's pretty cool. This is where those nice flight, uh, virtual flight, flight controls come into play because you're just doing really fine tuning. Yeah. Second, the real plane, fingertip flying. Yeah, I think what I really like about it is it, it just feels totally normal. Yep. Like it, it's just not much. The, the rudder is stiff, like it it is in the plane, and it just yep. it feels very true. Obviously, the throttle is very much like that. So going between the two is really quite simple and nice. Here come your minimums. You can see that blue marker on the five hundred altitude tape. Five hundred. Yep. See the runway in sight. Okay. So I'm going to your minimums call. Minimums, minimums. And continue. Yep, continue. So you can see runway markings. Yep. And I see the lights. That's happy. Yep. So you've identified some things that continue the approach there. Looks perfect. Yeah. It's not visual really at this point. Yep, absolutely. Yep. It's not totally visual at this point. This thing actually lands Go very off. realistically too. Okay, down the runway. I hate landing some simulators, but this one actually feels realistic. Alright. Okay. Alright. <laughs> As you're enjoying these flight simulator videos here with Virtual Fly, keep in mind that Angle of Attack offers online training as well. No matter where you are in the US, do your online ground school and written test study with us. Accessible anywhere, anytime, on any device. Enroll today and take advantage of our wealth of aviation knowledge. Okay, John did a great job. Now it's time for Oscar to jump in and give the flight controls a go. He's brand new to instrument flying, so I'll put him through a few maneuvers to build a basic scan and then turn him loose on an instrument approach of his own. So here you come. Let's go. So I'm going to maintain 2500 here. And, and I'm going to start yeah, turning north. Good. Yeah, turn left to 360. Okay. So 5,000 feet and 360 degrees. Alright, looking good. Uh, do a left turn now to 180. Okay, 180. So first thing is I will actually go 180 here. 
zero. And a left, yeah? Correct. I've done, uh, I've actually done in real flying uh, a bit of a IMC with an instructor and the sensation I have now and the sensation I have when I when I flew in reality is, is quite similar except the fact that of course I'm at, this is not full motion or, or anything so I'm not noticing any g-forces but I mean you feel you really feel like it's, it's, there's so many things going outside but everything inside is very stable so we're maintaining 5,000 feet uh, heading of 180 but you just don't see anything outside so it it's just tricky for the head right for the brain yep there are a lot of people that never fly an IMC during their instrument training which you can't require people to do that right if you're training in Arizona you can't necessarily go and find clouds in Arizona <laughs> it's very difficult but it is a different thing being in in real clouds yeah um, but what's nice obviously is with instrument you're relying on your instruments and so building your mind around trusting the instruments like we are in this case is extremely helpful yeah and it's sometimes difficult to rely on the instruments when you feel something uh, different your body feeling something different yeah and that's why when I did that IMC which was very brief it was like 25 30 minutes but I remember all these body sensations weren't uh, the sensations I was feeling when I was looking at the instruments okay so 100 knots 2300 and you're a mile away, go one notch of flaps. One notch of flaps in. That will be our final configuration. I'm going down to 90 knots. And I can see we're capturing the magenta diamond. Yes, sir. And I'm getting used to this too. Probably the best place to put down the slaps is right as you capture. Yeah. Because that'll just let you start to descend. Okay, so we're captured now. Yep, so pull your power back to 2000. And that should bring your nose down. That should bring it. And start to stabilize that. You can see it's getting sensitive here. Five hundred. Check. Five hundred. Minimums. Minimums. Okay, looking out, continue. And now I'll just go visual. Yep, go visual, set up for landing, your other notch of flaps when you're ready. Check your landing gear if you had it. Yeah. sir Boom. well done well done indeed yeah so stay level avionics we're, we're all over social media we're on youtube that's our number one place for you to get the most amount of resources to be learning about our products and how you can advance your flight simulation going forward we're also on instagram facebook and we've also recently launched our tiktok channel uh, so you can check us out there and once again the easiest place too to get a hold of me slavics.com slash contact that's slavx.com slash contact head over to our page we got a few tabs up there and feel free to send me a note and i'm usually pretty quick to respond so that's how you get a hold of us check out our complete portfolio here on the website and contact us for any further information on the next episode we continue working with the flight simulator but best of all we get the guys out flying in beautiful alaska for some utterly stunning views and experiences Hit that like button, make sure to hit subscribe because we like you and we want you to stick around. 
and turn on your notifications so you don't miss another episode or video. Fly safe, and until next time, throttle on! <laughs> <laughs>